folks, Fat Guy Flies RC coming to you from the man cave. We're going to do the assembly and radio setup on the FMS Fox 2300 millimeter uh, power glider. All right, now in the unboxing um, and the beginning of the film, I said that I off camera because it, in the unboxing I discovered that you have to physically install all of your control horns okay on all your control services well I went ahead and did that and I went ahead and did the uh, hold the phone uh, treatment on all the hinges and uh, all that is is you just take uh, this product here which is uh, hold the phone from Beacon and you just put your little bead of it and, the, and all your control and all your hinges so this hall has this entire plane has pinch hinges or foam hinges, and you just take a bead and you just run that, take your uh, Q-tip or whatever you want to use, or your finger, and then just push your uh, control service out as far as you flex it out, and, and run a little bit of that, uh, just a real thin bead of that hold the foam there, and that will dry clear, but it will remain flexible and basically protect your hinge just like blender tape would do. It's a nice alternative. To blender tape. I think a bit blender tape is emergency repair at the field. Uh, hold the phone beacon is a permanent long term insurance policy. Just think of it that way. All right, so we've got all the control horns attached to all control services. Now, there is one of the control horns that stand out. Um, they're all ball link except for one. You want to get the baggie that has the control arm on it that does not have a ball hinge okay, or a ball link. And that is the one that you're going to attach to the bottom of your um, elevator. Okay, We're going to start with the elevator. Like I said, we're installed that. And to make your life easier, installing your elevator. So this can be a little aggravating if you don't understand. You have this push rod hanging out. I don't know if you can see a little... Uh, well anyways, I'll, I'll, this, will make, this will make it easier. Get your little Allen wrench. Okay, a little bitty one. You see you've got this um, elevator servo. Go in there and loosen that up. Okay. Uh oh. That, that, that. that Allen wrench isn't going to work for me. That one's not working either. Hold on just a second, let me. Apparently, I picked the wrong tool. I just looked at it and I said, oh, that's one of those. And no, it's not. Okay. Hold on, let me uh, off camera. Wait, 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 this might be it. This one might be it's a little bit thicker. Okay, there we go. Well, anyways, get the right Allen wrench. I don't know the size here. Um, maybe eighth of an inch. So anyways, this control uh, rod, or control uh, that right there, control rod. Undo that. Okay, slide it out. So don't slide out all the way. It's in a channel. You can see it. Right, look at that servo, the elevator servo right there. See that poking in and out there? Pull that out. Okay. And then you're going to want. Now I'm going to go to the innermost hole because I want the most control. Actually, no, the instructions say to go to the outermost hole. And you'll see it, the outermost hole is a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger diameter of hole. Take your model, put it on the ground, okay? Turn the little. Um, Z bend to one side to make it easier to fit in that hole. Okay. 
symbol. All right, and then now you've got, and it should look like that. It should be kind of in and up. All right, that'll make that easier. Put that hook on in there. And the whole thing must slide to that channel there. Now, in your kit, the bag that's got the, these long screws is the one that has all the clevises and control arms for your, for your rudder and your tail feathers. That's the bag you want to open up, okay? You're going to take your rudder, you're going to turn it to one side, see the brass fittings there? I'm take these long, the long screws you get with the kit, and you're going to feed them in there. Awesome. And I dropped it. Luckily, they give you an extra one. Or you can go on from below. That's even easier. That's even easier. I love these FMS stands. And that is hacked with a looks like a two millimeter. Yep. Two millimeter machine screw. for just a minute see what my problem is all right I figured out what my problem was I just didn't have the right diameter of uh, tool and you just have to kind of finagle around but it looks like it's maybe a 1.5 millimeter hex head and uh, you'll have to really press your elevator down in there and once it makes purchase it's, I uh, hear that, hear that squeaking? Yeah, it, it, it's very obvious and it, it'll, um, I'm tightening this one up here. All right, and that's how you know you've got them in there is you'll see the ends of the threads coming through the brass fittings there. That way you know you got it. So that is in there. And uh, the other thing is go ahead, like I said, you want to loosen up this grub screw where you can uh, uh, adjust, see that, see the, uh, right there, see that push rod? I don't know if you can see it or not. As I move that elevator, see it move? Okay. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to push that elevator all the way down now. I'll pull it all the way up actually so that I can get it around and fit it back into that um, adjustable linkage. Okay, there we go. And then once it's back in there, don't tighten it down. See, now that it's, it's in there, I've got a, a fish back through there. Don't tighten that down. Leave that kind of loose because you want to make sure that servo is uh, centered and I don't do that until I have after I've bound the aircraft up all right so now that takes care of putting on the tail feathers now we can turn our attention to the wings okay now it says instructions you've got these really very nice um, Y leads okay they're labeled flap, and the one that's labeled flaps um, are the ones that you use. This is flap, this is flap. The one that's not labeled is aileron, 
Okay, so let's take our fuselage, take our carbon spar, fit it through the obvious place on the fuselage that it goes. Take our wings. Push it in the, the hole there. Okay. It has an obvious stopping point. You're going to take your flap servo. Remember where that elevator is? Okay. I'll fish that through there. I'm going to hook up your flap to the flap. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to hook these wings up and then you're going to fish both of these aileron leads down into the fuselage here. Okay, so I'm going to hook up my flap. I love these locking uh, servo connections. Remember, they, you can always hook them up light to light, dark to dark. Okay. Light to light, dark to dark. Fish that end of that servo lead into that very obvious channel. Take the other end of the flap uh, Y lead fish it over the other side because you can hook up your other flap. Okay, take your other wing. Use the spar to your advantage. Bring it down. Take your flap and that other end of the flap that you just fished through there, the connector. Remember light to light, dark to dark. Hook those two things up. And you'll feel them click in. And then you're going to fish that servo the Y. Well now, now see it's, it's poking out down here in the radio bank. Now you're going to take your unlabeled servo, lead, Y lead, fish it through the side here with the this doubled just like you did with the flap, the Y, but doubled this end here. It's going to fish in towards the front of the fuselage to that very obvious hole. Okay, you're going to fish, leave one end on this side, fish the other, the other connector, quick connect side to the other side. All right, and this is the, this is the unlabeled Y. I'm going to hook up to your ailerons. Remember, light to light, dark to dark. You'll feel it click in. You know, you kind of have to finagle it a little bit. Remember, the unlabeled one is your aileron. The flap is labeled. All right, you're going to, the nose will both fish down through there. And you should end up. Two servo leads you should end up actually with a total of four servo leads poking through. One for rudder, one for elevator, one for aileron, one for elevator. Well, elevator, and one, two, three, four. Yeah, you should have a total of four coming through. This takes just a second. Let me kind of finagle this through. We'll come right back. All right. <laughs> Screwed something up. All right. I fished both the Y leads through. Okay. And everything's through. And if you look, get the one smiled around. You then have that flap lead through there. Then you have the unlabeled lead, which is your aileron. And then, of course, you have your rudder in your elevator there. All right. One thing I screwed up on that I didn't do. I'll turn this thing around in here. 
is um, I didn't read the instructions all that well. There's four screws here that are there. Little Phillips said you need to loosen them up a little bit before you slide the wings in and then you'll crank them back down once the wings are in place. That's what holds, that's a pressure fit on that and that, that wing is in there now. That whole that pressure fits onto the uh, wing spar itself, okay? But basically, the model is together other than hooking up all of the uh, control surfaces from the servos to the control surfaces, which that I'll do in just a second. Let's get the model turned over and get our radio. And I'm dropping stuff off of here. It's a big model. You have to prepare for this, this, this wing size. All right. I'll put the model off the side for just a second. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. On the radio. All right, this is a Spectrum NX10. All right, I'm going to create a new model. Okay. Go down here to bottom, get past all everything, add a new model. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this takes a second, depending on how many models you got on your transmitter. Okay, now, model type. Well, yes, we want to do that. Model name. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this um, FMS. Okay, FA F O X space. 2300. And that's important to call. Wait a minute. 2300 because there's also an FMS Fox 3000. Okay. Now, the aircraft type is. One, one wing, one wing, one one aileron, one flat. Because you got one. Remember those Y's? You got a one signal there. All right, go to that image here. Now let's just pick something that's a little closer. Something that kind of looks like that. There. Well, that would be close. Close enough. All right. Now, the other thing I'm going to want to do, I'm going to want to want to do, before I do anything else, I want to do, go ahead and get my throttle cut. F. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, not F. Sorry. I like H. All right. All right. Now, I've got the basic model set up in the transmitter. Very basic. I'm going to be using an AR630. Okay. I'm sorry. That's an AR620. AR620. Okay. Big open space okay, down here. They want you to put the battery underneath these straps. So I'm going to put the transmitter right behind that area. Transmitter, the receiver. Remember, the transmitter is what you hold in your hand, the receiver is what you uh, put in the plane because your transmitter, your radio, transmits the signal and your receiver. In this case, an AR620 receives that signal. Okay? I like using Gorilla double sided tape to mount my receivers. 
It just seems to work really, really well for me. thing I like to do is I like to get wrap a hold of my throttle. Remember the servo the servo lead or in this case the throttle lead the light side wire whether it is white or yellow but whatever the lightest color is going to go towards the top side of your receiver or up okay and, and on a spectrum that is channel one not bind, you can think of your bind channel as, as one right before that, think of that as channel zero. The next one you're going to pick is always going to be your aileron. So in this case, it's that one that's not labeled, that one double, double part Y that's coming out that was not labeled, okay? Because that's two, two, lead, two servos being controlled by one lead. Remember in the radio setup, we picked one Aileron one flap. Well, that's because we got the two servos going into one signal wire. Okay, the next one I'm going to pick now is elevator. Okay, it's kind of like tear. Okay, uh, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, or TR, or something like that. The T A E R. Okay. Next one I'm going to pick is not an elevator, light side up, and then I'm going to go over the rudder. Okay. And then I'm going to skip on the six channel receiver. I'm going to go all the way up to channel six. Because channel five is typically your uh, gear channel. So after all is said and done, on a spectrum, AR620 or any spectrum receiver. When you get them all hooked up, that's how it should end up. You see that space? Those four servos leads are plugged in from throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and then you skip the channel, and then you go to flap. The flap is channel six. You're leaving channel five empty. Okay? Now, let me plug in that. Remember, these receivers, these AR620s, they are not directional dependent, orientation dependent, okay? It doesn't really matter the orientation because, you know what, I think what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is actually, somewhat level, okay, take my radio, or my battery, melt that in there, plug it in, and I'm going to hit Hit the bind button on there. See how it's flashing now? Okay. That means that my model is looking for a signal. That beeping is the uh, ESC wanting to know what's going on. You go to function list. Okay. All right. All right. Here you are. Hit your roller. Go down to bind. Yes. Bind. Bind complete. Alright, bind's complete. 
Now, I hear the servos trying to react. All right, because nothing's hooked up, but that tells me that I've got connection. All right, everything's the way, everything's talking to itself. All right, now this is a great time for you to take your model. Let's go ahead and calibrate the ESC. This is going to be kind of tricky on how to do this. Okay. Because you want to have where the prop has good clearance and it's not touching anything. Okay. So props down here not touching anything. Okay. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to unplug your model. No power. Leaving your transmitter on. Take it all the way up to full throttle. You know what? Hold on. Let's make sure the throttle works before we do it. We know we're already bound up. We got communication. Let's make sure our throttle works. Yeah. All right. That's back off now. Okay. And throttle cut. Cut my throttle all the way up. Okay. The airplane is unplugged from the battery. Transmitter is still on with throttle all the way up, high throttle. I'm going to plug it in. Listen. Yeah, it, it, it was, was not loud. I thought this ESC would be louder. Okay. Okay. What I did was this ESC is very quiet, so you couldn't hear the beeps. Um, with the throttle on, I activated the, the, put the power on, with the throttle all the way up, turn the power on, the model realized that the power is on and it went into the, pro, the programming mode. As soon as I heard the beep saying it's in the programming mode, I immediately dropped throttle and then I heard the normal one, two, three beeps, that's counting the cells. And then now look at this, I've got immediate throttle response, that's what I was looking for. So for all cut back on, okay. So there's no no throttle. Now we can turn our attention to getting these servos centered. So it's basically, very basically, and this prop's already assembled on here, so I'm not going to go through the hassle. I've got throttle cut engaged, so I'm not going to worry about that. All right. Put that off to the side. Let's start paying our attention to the tail. Okay. Oh gosh. That's what I'm trying to do a video with this great big plane. All right. In your kit, you have five push rods. Four of them are all exactly the same length, and then one is about half an inch shorter. The half an inch shorter one is going to be for your rudder. Okay? I'm going to hook that up on the outer hole, okay, on your uh, servo for your rudder. You've already established that um, everything is centered. Okay? And if you look, okay, my you know what? I'm going to hook this up for the underside because I put that ball link facing down. I probably should have put it facing up. So instead, I'm going to have to go from underneath. But that's okay. All right, if you look, the ball link doesn't, is a little bit longer. If I push it on there, I don't know how it's pushing my rudder off to one side. Okay? Well, I want it to be straight. I want it to be right here. I want it to be perfectly straight. So that means that my control rod is a little long. So I'm just going to squeeze in the ball link connection until I can put it holding my rudder completely neutral right up here or from below. Nice and neutral. I'm going to just set that on. If it sets right on there. And it doesn't, oh, well, see, now it's pushing, it's kind of pushing the rudder that way a little bit, so now let me run it out a turn or two. Okay. I'm going to 
set that on there now. Not, still not quite. But you, you'll see what when you're doing this. Get your get it right. Okay. I'm setting that on there, and that's almost. I need to pull it in just a little bit more. This sometimes takes a while. I'm going the wrong direction. That is perfect. That's perfect. I'm setting it on. I'm just pushing that on there. And on the, uh, the ball length with the... Uh, clevis. I'm pushing that on and I'm going to take a set of pliers and just let that ball link pop into place. Now look at that. And look, look how, and now my rudder is nice and centered. Okay, now the elevator, remember we've got that quick connect there. Okay. Okay. What I want to do is move my elevator where it's all because it's already that control rod is already pushing through. So all I need to do now is and I know that that is the elevator is nice and centered. Where I want it to be. Okay. All I got to do now is tighten up that, that rub screw. Helps if I grab the right tool. Okay. I'll get the right one here in a second. Center. All right, now I'm going to repeat the same process on the flaps and the ailerons. Okay, same process on the flaps and ailerons, but we don't need to bore you with that's the exact same thing. If it does, when you hook it, you're going to, whenever you hook your control rod to the outermost hole um, on the uh, arm of the servo, and then the ball link little donut thing hooks the ball you know if it's nice and straight and the elevator or the control surface is straight and hooks right there then you're fine if it doesn't touch it then you either rotate this in or out to get it level and where the where it's mechanically trim and everything's level and everything's hooked up so same thing I just did on the elevator and the rudder so I'm gonna repeat it the next four times but we'll pause for that All right, that guy flies there. So here, one more, continuing on, make sure on your flaps, I've forgotten to say this before I started talking about hooking the wing and everything. Make sure in your flap system, I see D is for flaps. Make sure you already put your position for your up flaps, a position zero, as a negative 100%. Okay, the reason for that is that should push the flap servos towards, towards the flap, the, the arm of the servo towards the flap. And then you, you're then able to um, hook up your ball links. See, I've got it hooked up now, and watch the flap whenever I change positions, okay?
see? Because otherwise, you won't have enough length of your uh, control rod. And you'll think, what the heck? You know, they didn't, they didn't make it, they got too short. No, make sure that your servos are all the way, your flap servo is negative 100%, in other words, all the way towards the back of the knee. All right, so now we can take it. And move the model over, and I can do this side. All right, I'm going to take another one of these. Let me back up a little bit where you can actually see what I'm doing. Move the camera a little bit, sorry. So let me pause for just a second so I can get the camera in a better angle. Also, part of the setup for this, I have uh, read the instructions um, in the manual for CG say 40 millimeters, but the outside of the box says 55 millimeters. The 55 millimeters is right, the manual is wrong. What's on the outside of the box is right. That's the latest information. If you look, you see that there's this line here that goes where this uh, there's a section right there on that line is your CG. You feel that little line, that little, uh, uh, little crease? That is your CG, and she balances just perfectly right there. So, 55 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing is your uh, CG mark. So, there you go. And I've got an 1800 milliamp battery right in the middle of the tray. So, just want to uh, make sure I included that. That's the CG. All right, thank you. We're going to continue on with the assembly or the radio setup. Bye bye. All right, continuing on. All right, we're going to hook up the other wings. Just want to show it. I know I decided to do off the camera, but I figured you'd appreciate it. All right, we're going to hook up the aileron servo on the left wing. And that clevis is too short. Okay, so I'm going to untie it, unscrew it a little bit, leaving aileron nice and level and I'm going to wait until I see that that just sits on there. Okay, so I'm going to screw it out a little bit more. Okay. A little bit more, not much more though. I'm right, making sure that my aileron is level. One more time. This is just a trial and error type thing. Just make sure when you put your the ball length, the donut part, onto onto that onto the uh, ball. Make sure that your control surface still stays level, level with the with the wing here, because you already know your your uh, servos level. Okay. You should feel that click in. Now watch. See? And then that goes back in a nice neutral position. All right. Same thing over here for the flap. Make sure the flap is at negative 100. In other words, the control arm or the, the arm of the servo is towards the back. Hook it on the outermost receive end, goes through the outermost hole on the arm of the servo. Okay. And that that donut there is almost perfect. It needs to come out just a touch. So we go to the left. Yeah, that's perfect right there. They're just a special kind of touch to get these uh, ball wings. There, feel that click in and watch my flash. 
think. All right. So now I have the FMS Fox glider is now completely actually other than making my radio settings and the audio part, the and timers and all that is pretty much set. Okay. Now, let me back up just a little bit so you can see this is such a big plane. If you can see, elevator works. It's reversed, but it works. Rudder works. Any other ones work? Flaps work. All right, now, leaving the plane here in the foreground, okay, where you can see it, let me get on this side of it. This wing is such a big plane. It's much bigger than I thought it was going to be, but I knew, you know, 2300. It's going to be a big wing, big plane, okay? Now, you can still pretty much see everything okay see my ailerons all right my ailerons are backwards my elevator is backwards because see look watch my when i pull back on the elevator it goes down that's wrong when i go right aileron uh, that should the aileron should be going up not down Rudder is right, okay, and I know my throttle's right. Throttle cut is still on. All right, so let's go back, and you're, this is where you're going to go to servo setup. I know that my okay, you go to uh, reverse, okay. Hit aileron, hit elevator. Now watch the elevator. Goes up. And goes down. Watch those ailerons. Right aileron, left aileron. They're correct now. Flaps are already okay. And the rudder's right. Right rudder, left rudder. Okay, so that's set up. All right. Dual rates and expo. On this particular plane, I'm only going to do one rate. So I don't have to assign it to a switch. I'm going to leave the ailerons at 100%. And I'm going to put 30% Expo in. Switch to Elevator, 100%. 30% Expo. Back up to Rudder. And down there, oh. Sorry. Rudder. Take it to 30% Expo. Now, let's say that's, you know, that's, that's plenty of rudder. Let's go back to elevator. Now, look at that elevator. Let's say I want more elevator. Back here, I'm going to increase that most I can get is 125. Now, that gives me more elevator throw. All right, we've already got our throw cut. We've already got our rates. All right, we've got our directions. Let's go back to our flaps. Back here to flap system. Okay, I don't know, the instructions don't call out that I saw for an elevator to flap mix. So we're going to not program anything in. Okay. Let's go to flaps up, which they're all the way up, is negative 100%. Take off flaps though, put it that, that's way too much. So let's take that to say negative, negative 50. And that's what negative 50 looks like. So flaps up. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps. And the way that translates on here is negative 100% for flaps up, negative 
for takeoff and 100% positive for landing. Okay, now they really move quickly, so let's take that speed, make that down to two seconds. Now, watch go to uh, takeoff flaps, much slower, landing flaps, much more, much more, much more scale. All right, now let's go ahead while we're on the radio. We've got throttle cut set for H, right? We've got servos going the right direction, and we set up our um, flap system. All right, so let's go ahead and do ourselves, set up our timer. We're going to set the time on this for seven minutes because it is a glider. Okay. all the way to the very last screen and this is where you pick your tones now me I like voice on almost everything I like to hear that British lady on, on almost all of these except for a few I'll show you that in a second when times expired that's when I want all of it I want voice and vibe and then every moment, every minute, I want the voice. And the very, then go to that last page and turn off all these tones. Now, you can leave them on if you want to, but I like them inhibit them because if you don't, every time you hit that throttle, move that throttle, you're here beeping, 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 and that just drives me nuts. Okay? So let's do the audio prompts while we've got this set up. Okay, we're going to go to audio, auto events, switch changes, add a new event. Now I, I got to find my switch, which I always start with my throttle cut, which is H. Okay, and when you pick the action, this is throttle, this is H all the way down. That's position zero. That means my prop's on, but it's down there. I'm not going to touch it. I have already set myself up a uh, shortcut and I called it my name Greg and then but otherwise you'd have to let me just show you something um, you would go up here and you go select category okay and you'd have to go to all sounds list and you had to go all the way through this entire all the sounds okay well that, that's just monotonous okay so I set up that my own custom um, group of sounds. Now there's another video on how to do that. Well, now I gotta get out of it. Now look, I gotta go all, <laughs> all the way to the top to, to select my category where I've got my custom set of uh, sounds. Sorry about that. <laughs> Alright, select category, go down to Greg. And I'm going to do motor. What I like is that when motor's on, I put motor on. Okay. Now, for motor off, I like prop secured. As soon as I find it. Okay. Now, my other sound is going to be flaps. Okay. We know position zero, the very up position, is going to be flaps up. So let's find flaps, flaps up. And the next position down will be takeoff flaps. And the very bottom position, or position two, is going to be landing flaps. Okay. I'm going to make my audio all the way up. There we go. Now, you can listen for the corresponding sounds. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps, flaps up, prop secured, motor on. Okay, motors, let me make sure it's not right here to stand. See? Motors on, prop secured, motors off. 
Nothing's wrong. Takeoff flaps. Landing flaps. Flaps up. See, they're working. All right. So, we have it set for got our timer set. We calibrated the ESC. Again, calibrate the ESC. Leave your transmitter on. Unplug your model from your battery. With your transmitter still on, move your um, prop all the way, throttle all the way up. Plug your battery um, back in. You will hear the uh, ESC go through those diagnostics, some little uh, musical sounding tones. Drop your throttle all the way down. And then you listen for three beats. Beep, beep, beep. That's counting the cells, and then you'll hear the normal startup sound for the ESC. And then you should have, at that point, immediate, immediate pop, prop response. Prop, immediate uh, prop response or throttle response. That's what you're looking for. And if you got immediate, then you know you've properly calibrated your ESC. Now you can go back in there and, and turn up, pull up the page that gives you all the different tones and you can do a speed break or a, let it free spin or all these different things you can do but I just like immediate uh, prop response and then that's all I do. Um, when the airplane is going through the air with the greatest of ease, this prop does not automatically fold whenever you've got the plane like this one but whenever that plane is flying Okay, obviously the prop is going to be out to pull the plane along, but, but if it, when you turn the prop off and it starts gliding, that air speed will, the air will push that prop back like this. The biggest thing I'm telling you about this is going to see how that prop just flops up. When you go to pick it up, you don't want to bind that, you know, and break your prop. And this is one of the reasons why when I buy a model, I always buy an extra prop. <laughs> because I know I'm going to get careless, and that's going to happen. All right, well, there you go. That is the basic uh, radio setup. Now, you can go in there, and you could probably hook up, do something fancy, and, and programs, get some lines, and program Crow into these um, control surfaces on your wing, and, you know, and different and put mixes, and whatever you want. That's just the basic radio setup. I've got your... Exponential for a plane like this, 30% uh, exponential, 30% throws, or 100% throws is really all you need. Um, I did put 125 on the elevator only because I like to have more elevator response. Um, but you got to remember, the more throw you have, and, and uh, the more and more distinct the movement's going to be. Be careful on how much stick, and how quickly you move the sticks. That's why you put the expo in. So it's not so quick and jerky. The expo kind of makes it, it kind of smooths out the rough surfaces, if you will. But uh, there you go. It's a good looking plane. Should fly real well. I'll probably, it, the, the uh, uh, manual calls out for a 1300, but I'll probably put a 2200 or an 1800 in there, uh, 3S, and uh, yeah. I'll also, I don't know if I covered it or I can't remember now. This is taking me forever. When you're um, securing your elevator here, the screws go in from the bottom. You may have to trial and error. You may have to do that a couple of times, back and forth, back and forth. Um, I want to say it's a 1.5 millimeter hex drive. and Because uh, you might get little pieces of foam getting away little cells of foam get in the way and that'll throw off your alignment so be careful with that but once it's secure you'll see the threads come through on the other side you'll, you'll physically they don't go all the way through but you'll still see them and it'd be very obvious and so if it's not very obvious it feels like it's just spinning you're not there back out and start over um, we'll get this out to the field and get us some maiden again like I say because that prop doesn't automatically fold back be careful setting it down you know, kind of set off to one side and lean off the other. That way you don't bind that prop when you set it down. But that's pretty much it. Um, thank you for watching. This is Fat Guy Flies RC. I know the, prop, the camera's down there now. Um, yes, my videos, my build videos, they seem kind of sporadic. Um, 
as time goes by, I'll, I'll get better <laughs> doing these. You will have some screws and stuff left over. They were nice and gave us a few extra screws. Don't forget on the wings, um, there's four Phillip head screws that uh, bite into the uh, spar. You, if you want to take the wings off, you're going to need to undo those screws, undo those quick and those uh, quick and X, and uh, slide them out. I would I would or are the uh, the the uh, Y's and slide your wings out. However, to be honest, I won't take the wings off because I'll be able to put this in the bed of my truck. But what if but if you're going to put this in a small car, fold your leave the wing on, fold your seats down, and because it's only it's not very long, okay? You take take your rubber band and put that around your props, okay? It's not very, uh, the fuselage is not very long, so that should fit in your car. Put one in, one wing up there towards you and the other wing and your hat should close or your back seat, and uh, that way you can leave the wing on. It, it's just it's just better all the way around. The more you keep taking that wing on and off, on and off, on and off, yes, I know it's designed to do that, but if I can leave a model assembled, I'm going to leave a model assembled, if I can do it, if I can get away with it. But that's just me. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless you all. And don't forget, faith, family, and friends, and then planes. Big shout out to Horizon, or to, uh, <laughs> Horizon. Um, to Hobby Zone, sending me this unit out for review. We'll get it out in the field, and we'll get a maiden for you. Bye-bye, y'all.